So immunotherapy basically is a form of therapy that is highly effective for many human malignancies. And what is cool about it is it's designed to go after the heterogeneity of cancer. So the more foreign the cancer looks, the more it piques the immune system's curiosity. So guys that develop drugs, they think the heterogeneity of cancer is a landmine. Immunologists see the heterogeneity of cancer as a gold mine. All right, got that? Pretty tricky. Anyway, so the way that immunotherapy works is you trigger an immune response, it swarms all over the cancer. Cytotoxic cancer, uh, immune cells then inject venomous stuff into the cancer and the cancer goes away. So that's all real cool. We have many different weapons now to treat cancer using immunotherapy. Most of them are referred to as checkpoint blockade, nivolumab, uh, Optivo, so forth and so on. Why, are, why is checkpoint blockade so important? Before 1995, everyone knew how to trigger immune, immune responses against cancer, but no one could drive them to a therapeutic outcome. In 1995, Dr. Allison identified something that keeps the immune, immune system going and going, and that was called checkpoint blockade, which related to inhib inhibitors of the immune system. So what does that mean? So I was working with Jim Allison at the time when all this information was coming up, and that's kind of where these slides came from. Jim Allison showed that there were two signals that required turn on a T cell. Once you deliver the two cells, the T cells get very excited. Subsequently, you get an army of these T cells that can recognize an antigen, go after it, and kill something like a tumor, okay? But Jim Allison also found that shortly after T cells activated, another little receptor showed up on the surface at that time. It was called CTLA-4. He didn't know what, he did, what it did, but he worked it out. And what he found out was after a T cell gets activated, CTLA-4 shows up and it shuts down the immune response. Pretty cool. Based on that, he hypothesized that CTLA-4 functioned like the brakes on a car to stop the immune system. So after he figured that out, he came up with even a brighter idea. What happens if we jam the brakes on the immune system using an antibody against CTLA-4? Could it let the immune system keep going and going and going to fight cancer? And basically the idea was give monoclonal antibody, the immune system would keep going, Subsequently, you'd wipe out cancer, and guess what? In 2011, the first checkpoint inhibitor, Eurovoy, was approved for the treatment of human malignancies. It was the first time in the history of management of metastatic melanoma that they saw overall survival advances or advantages, and that was Eurovoy. So it was the first one that worked for human malignancy. I got to be the first author on this on the attempt to treat advanced prostate cancer with Eurovoy, and my study failed. And it, still, it failed by 0.03%. Uh, so I missed by three one thousandths of a point. And unfortunately, FDA didn't approve it, and BMS abandoned attempts for treatment of advanced prostate cancer with Eurovoy. Fear not. So a lot of people also know, have heard PD-1, anti-PD-1 therapy, so the whole PD-1, anti-PD-1 therapy story, to some extent, came out of my laboratory. We had found this molecule B7H1 on the surface of kidney cancers. And what was really weird is whenever a patient had B7H1 on the surface of their cancer, they didn't do very well. On the other hand, if you didn't have B7H1 on the surface of your kidney cancer, you lasted a long time. This one molecule could predict independently who's going to live or die after kidney surgery. So our hypothesis at that time became, well, maybe B7H1 gets deployed by cancer like barbed wire to poke holes in the immune system. So that was the hypothesis. And from that, there was a great uh, kind of excitement about developing anti-PD-1, PD-L1 uh, PD therapies. 
What's funny is B7H1 turned out to be PD-1 ligand. That's the ligand that binds to B, uh, PD-1. So the idea then became if you block B7H1 or PDL1, or if you block the receptor PD-1, just like CTLA-4, you could get immune system, keep going and going to fight the battle against cancer. So now, what do we have? Now we have a ton of additional agents to treat human malignancy with immunotherapy, and this includes nivolumab, uh, which is Optivo, Keytruda, so forth and so on. Virtually every pharmacologic group out there is trying to develop an immunotherapy for treatment of cancer. Nobody talks to me about this, by the way. So now it's been approved for lung cancer, bladder, so forth, my, uh, melanoma, um, renal cell carcinoma. This is an example of a patient I treated with a pilimumab. Guy had a PSA of 88, gave him IPI. His PSA dropped down to 1.3. All the disease in his chest went away. It was amazing. Still bothered me, he had a little PSA. I ran him through my C11 cooling PET scanner. I found two additional spots that didn't respond to immunotherapy. We cut those out. We just cut them out. PSA went to zero. He's doing fine. So the bottom line with immunotherapy is we're still trying to work it out. I think immunotherapy has been a miracle for a lot of very serious malignancies. I think there are a couple kinks that need to be worked out for prostate cancer. I hope one day someone has the energy and the time to work it out. Um, I do know that we're working on various uh, avenues of increasing priming responses and so forth, but can't get it all done. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much.